Hello guys, welcome to a new tutorial how to create Gaussian splatting models from existing 3D models. Uh, for this tutorial we will create a Gaussian splatting model, splatting model of uh, this Vitra ID chair uh, with 3ds Max, a custom tool I wrote uh, to export data to PostShot and then to train it in PostShot. You can find the tool on my website and I will of course put a link in the description and also on my website in the article there will be a bit more detailed uh, description how to do that and here you can download it. Okay, now I will show you in 3ds Max my scene. So it's very basic, a few objects of the chair and a simple light setup. On the website you can find uh, the Max script tool and if you download it um, you can run it here with scripting run script and then I have it saved on the desktop the MSE file um, open it and then you should see the exporter window with some rollouts. It's basically separated into three parts. So the first is creating the camera animation from vertex positions which is optional so if you want to use your own camera rig you can do this and then uh, you can export the camera transformations uh, to a CSV file and the third part is exporting the initial point cloud from the vertices. So to create the Gaussian splatting model from this 3D object um, we can create a geosphere first and make it a bit bigger and center it in the object and even maybe even more bigger and uh, the default option is here set to five segments which means uh, in total it will be at the moment 252 vertices for the camera animation and I think this is a good starting point you could even go maybe for simpler tests a bit lower to to three uh, which would just generate 92 images but I think for a high visual quality a bit more pictures are better so I will set this back to five and then create a camera which will just create a very basic um, physical camera and then here this physical camera and the geosphere are automatically picked and now I can press the animate camera button and this will go, uh, do for, for every vertex in this geosphere it will animate the camera's position um, and so we have a camera animation showing every uh, different angles of the chair. So this is now the view from the camera, so the order is not very important. Um, but I can... Uh, I, will, I will move the target of the camera to the middle of the chair. So the, the chair should be um, big enough so, uh, so we don't have too much white space. Um, around but also we don't want it to be cropped a lot so it's better to have a bit more white space I think than to have it cropped okay so this is looking very good now generating 251 images so in, in V-Ray uh, 
the one important thing is that the ground plane, since we also show it from the bottom, I've set my ground plane to uh, invisible to the camera and um, yep. this is my, my ground plane, it's invisible to the camera and the model should have a good lighting from every angle I fear all the images of the chair and I can delete these and so yes these are 251 images exactly the same number as the vertices from the geosphere and now the next step is to export the camera transforms to a CSV file so I will add my camera here pick the camera and now what's very important is that in the CSV file the, the file names will match these file names and so the, the file name in the CSV file is constructed with you have a prefix, you have the camera name a separator, the frame number and an extension usually PNG file format with alpha channel, that's very important um, to have an alpha channel because then um, PostShot knows uh, can, can use the transparency also um, and here's now the prefix is this part uh, prefix and then I have uh, the camera name, physical camera yeah it's zero 07 here and okay I, I will rename it here for the moment to 7 and then you have a separator before the frame number that is an underscore and extension is PNG and I will want to export from frame 0 to 251 uh, here's also a checkbox to warn for missing for, for file name mismatches so if I press now the export CSV button and I will save it in this folder here the file name is not important, you can just name it frames.csv but the extension is important so and now I have the CSV file and you can see that here is, are the individual file names um, before the comma and they should all exist exactly in these in this folder okay so now that we have exported the CSV file uh, we can export a PLI file so PostShot wants a point cloud which is essentially 3D points and if it's a very simple object then you could just use the vertices from the mesh here but I, I want to show you another way you can use tie flow for this uh, create a new tie flow open the editor add a birth event and maybe uh, 1000 particles use an object uh, position, position object operator um, select all the chair objects and press add selected now you can already see uh, a lot of particles here on the mesh um, and we now we need a mesh operator 
and set it to point cloud and disable render only. In 3ds Max, I can we can export the initial point cloud from the vertices. I will pick type flow object here and uh, you don't need vertex colors, custom vertex colors, but it didn't work for me with black vertex colors. That's why here's check to override the vertex colors to gray values. And then I can uh, export the PLI file here. And it's uh, with just 1000 vertices, it's relatively fast, but it can be a bit slow with a lot of vertices. Then in post shot, um, I have now <coughs> in one folder the CSV file, the PLI file, and all my renderings. And now I can just drag the folder here in and it will if everything is correct it will um, see you can import the camera poses um, for objects it worked better with the mcmc radiance field profile and then just click import and now you should see here the the cameras and also the gaussian splatting model slowly building up. Now you can hide um, the cameras and the axis and now you have to wait for the 30k steps to complete. Then when the training is finished the model should like this should look like this and you can export to a final PLI file.